difference between bleeding, bleeding rates, and clinical, clinical uh, uh, benefit. I have some noise in, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, what I what I would prefer to follow is starting from the risk of bleeding of patient every time. If, if risk of bleeding is high, I think we should avoid any, uh, any, any combination. I mean, we should go for monotherapy, monotherapy as weak as possible. Uh, whatever is coming from trials, it's, it's just, at least for me, it's just confusing. What is the bottom line in, in follow-up? That means, should we, should we uh, for how long we should keep that double anti-aggregation therapy? Which kind is be the, the best one? What is the optimal treatment? I'm, actually, it, it is not clear even from all these trials cited today. I would like to ask one of the speakers, which is Dr. Vivi, about, uh, Vivi uh, uh, Gupta, about the long term. What is the optimal for you? What is the optimal treatment according to your review today? So, uh, thank you very much, Shemad. Uh, we had discussed two trials. One was the APT trial. Another yeah, one... out, out of trials, I, I think what you are preferring in your clinical practice. In, that, in my clinical practice, uh, whenever the patient is not having any major bleeding during the first year, and patient had a one or two or more than two stents, we are continuing beyond one year in my personal practice. If the patient has some sort of a relationship of bleeding or platelet counts going down or something else, uh, or the patient age is more than 75 or 80 years, then I would like to stop within one year, but at least one year. But we continue sometimes lifelong because the cost of the, in India, not myself, many times, a lot of patients, for example, a patient who undergone angioplasty with two stents at the age of 60, 65. We are not stopping cropedural unless we have some sort of a surgery or some sort of a, at that time, or dental extraction or something like that. But that is also intermittent. My practice, personally, I feel that it, we ought to be safe as far as ischemia is concerned, especially in diabetic population, and the patient is having more than two or two stents. So when you compare this data from a DAPT trial or the ischemia trial, only you have to stop only when you have a high bleeding risk profile. That means patient has some stroke, some bleeding, fatal or non-fatal bleeding, for example, a GI bleeding or stool in the cold blood or something like that. Then you are forced or you should stop it and if you suppose a similar patient, similar patient has angina, for example, within one year, he has another stable angina, and they undertake another angioplasty or maybe treated medically, I would like to continue even with this non fatal risk. That means, no, if it is GI bleed, I would like to continue, which is controlled. If it is cerebral okay. bleed, I would like to stop it. So we have to really see, that especially in India, the cost, there's so many other anti platelet. If you remember Plavix, in Europe, they were constrained by the cost and by the insurance. We have so many otherwise generic salt available, so the cost is not a constraint. So as such, if the patient does not have a major bleeding and the patient is a high risk or has an ischemia in between, it will continue at least for three years, even sometime more than that. This is my view personally in Delhi. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. What about uh, anticoagulation, rivaroxaban? Where, where you will, will absolutely recommend that? Not, not you, I am asking uh, uh, Sarat uh, Shandar. Yeah, that's what I, I said uh, just now. Uh, the one group of patients who will probably definitely benefit, as you can see from both this trial as well as the Wyeza trial, is patients of peripheral artery disease, who have mm -hmm. diffuse disease of peripheral artery, who have undergone amputation in the past, who have significant symptoms, but not eligible for revascularization. Probably that group has got a huge thrombotic risk. And we also know that they are very prone for coronary events and stroke events. Therefore, uh, I think peripheral artery disease patients clinically are the best cases for uh, long-term rivaroxaban. I would only add that I would rather give a clopidogrel than aspirin because the major risk of bleeding is from aspirin. And let me just add one more sentence to what uh, Dr. Uh, Gupta said, that um, um, after one year, 
of completion of PCI, if the patient is a high thrombotic risk patient, like what you see commonly in India, those who have reduced uh, EGFR, diabetes, and so on, but at the same time, their bleeding risk is considered to be low. I would treat him with uh, clopidogrel alone or ticagrelor alone as so much data is coming. In my opinion, it is the aspirin that actually increases the risk of bleeding, gastrointestinal, and probably in combination with other drugs, bleeding. So, you, you know, if you give low dose, um, if you give ticagrelor, probably the benefit is as much, but without the risk of bleeding. Okay. So, but, uh, doctor. Good afternoon, everyone. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, the recent data also more supportive of short nap followed by the monotherapy, like a twilight trial, globus lateral trial, and all these trials are short nap, even one x one trial, every trial is showing that just one, two, three months, even a DAP followed by monotherapy with uh, tecaglar. That is also equally effective in reducing the thrombotic events and with less bleeding complications. Uh, I request the panelists to discuss about this issue. Really see the precise DAP score, Paris score, and really score is more in favor of more bleeding or more thrombotic based upon that you can choose. If that is not there, like a, even ASC also recommended, like is it chronic stable angina, or stable ischemic heart disease, ACS, OCABG, ACS, or based upon that we can decide. But uh, now the more and more evidence is there for short DAP and with monotherapy with the ticagrelor is almost equally effective. Even all the studies are also more in favor. I request the panelists to discuss about this point. I I'd like to uh, I'd like to make a comment on that because uh, if you see at the precise DAPT and the global leader for freedom trial and the Onyx one trial, they are mainly the high risk bleeding categories where they have been switched up because. Based on the mechanism of action of platelets, you know that the ischemic risk is, will go almost down tapering at the three months. And one month, it is uh, magnet starts to taper. So that was the basis of switching because the, these trials which you have mentioned, most of them had a high bleeding risk uh, uh, categories. So there you can give a, a switch over to monotherapy for giving a DAPT for one to three months and switch, switch over. To single monotherapy. And instead of going straight shot like a 12 day, 12 uh, months of adapter, I yeah. think uh, better to predict the scores. Yes. And so like that, a precise so, and adapt and based upon that, we can decide. It. So if you look at all the uh, guidelines, they also comment that it, it has to be individualized and individualized. Yeah. Individualized. Right. Secondly, my, my concern is stopping aspirin. As you, Sarat, said, yeah, this could be a one of the major cause of one of the important cause of bleeding aspirin that means ticagrelor alone but we don't have any study with the uh, uh, clopidogrel alone i think we have to start some study where we can continue with clopidogrel alone without aspirin secondly i don't remember how much is the number of patients in ACOP, the twin twi like trial so that is the only trial which has shown the efficacy of or or if overall uh, with monotherapy hmm. i think we need to have because stopping aspirin is psychologically not easy Especially yeah. the minds of the patient as well as Dr. Sarath, what do you say? Yeah, you know, just now Dr. Srinivas Reddy showed. Srinivas, what is the number of patients in the twilight? I think 3,500 or something, no, is it? Yeah, hmm? 3,000 plus patients were there. And they, yeah. they were all mostly, they're, they're not multi-vessel stenting. They're all like a single stent and low risk uh, of patient. They were not higher bleeding risk patients. I think we have to be skeptical of stopping it. At the moment, I would not like to stop. But, but, but you know, Vivek, Vivek, let me tell you one thing. I know it is a psychological thing for us that this aspirin is the most important agent. If you see uh, more, effective. The, more, more efficacious are the ticagrelor or prasugrel. Of course, they are compared to uh, um, clopidogrel, uh, not alone with aspirin. But this twilight study should really make you think in these terms. Complete three months or four months, see if the patient is a high risk patient for uh, thrombotic events if he is not uh, go with uh, ticagrelor alone it gives equally in my opinion equally good results two trials that korean trial also he has shown tico's trial that also yeah, showed yeah. Uh, equally good results very important bleeding is less in that group bleeding yeah, is yeah. less and uh, equally equally efficacious uh, yeah. equally efficacious but safer yeah, yeah th this makes sense this makes yeah. sense yeah so you have got the three trial where they have compared there with a uh, 
comparison between the ticagrel and prasugrel so they found that they both are equally effective but based on the hemodynamic profile and the characteristics i think ticagrel would be a safer uh, drug so yeah, if yeah. possible ex uh, be, uh, because for going the cost i think ticagrel would be a better choice of drug now srinivas if you see the recent publication i think uh, um few maybe a year back uh, with prasugrel one to one had to had comparison with ticagrel or it showed prasugrel is actually safer the, even the bleeds are less i don't remember that uh, trial's name uh, but i i'm sure you all have read it we spoke it spoke about it many times it's equally effective and probably beneficial at least in that trial there could be different huh? yeah i'm talking of the tree trial which uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is different the one i mentioned is different there is another ip trial sorry iser ip trial correct iser react iser react 5 iser react 5 yeah. there is another trial prog 18 which came two years back uh, which yeah. was done in uh, uh, you know yeah. in prog so yeah. uh, there also similar results were shown yeah. equally efficacious personally yeah. i use prasugrel much more often than ticagrelor and i am very confident to use it i don't see any excess bleeding complications with prasugrel uh, dr brian are you planning to give your talk or you not no i'm i i'm not giving my talk to you or can utilize this time for we can utilize this time for discussion i have a few uh, points to i have a few sure. points to make on this uh, particular issue i i feel and we have been using this i think uh, for acute coronary syndrome patients now i think there is no doubt in my mind that we must use one of the newer antiplatelet drugs either we use ticagrel or oprasugrel when we are when we are doing a patient of acute coronary syndrome and if you have a cost problem then of course prasugrel is not very expensive and it is far better than using i think the only area where prasugrel gives a problem is one when you have a patient who is more than 80 years or more than 75 years of age has had a ti or a stroke in the in the past and those kind of of things where it is contraindicated or the body weight is less than 55 or 60 kg and then you have a problem so i clearly believe with a high risk group of patients the newer antiplatelet agents are far superior to the to the to clopidogrel at least for using however when we thrombolyze a patient when we are thrombolyzing a patient i think at that point in time the data is much more with clopidogrel than even with with ticagrelor because even ticagrelor which was utilized in in some of these trials i think it was it was the thing you mentioned the treat which occurred in the south american countries uh, ticagrelor was actually brought on board at about 12 hours post thrombolysis so i think with thrombolyzing i think clopidogrel is a much better is, is a much better uh, agent and much safer agent with thrombolysis on board however taking patients to the cath lab the newer agents would be far better from the studies that what uh, you know all have been shown over here i think we are moving towards stopping dual antiplatelet therapy by 3 to 6 months and i think that will enter the guidelines in the future with all these trials that that twilight and so many of them which have been shown up that single dose that the single antiplatelet agent like ticagrel or maybe even prasugrel may be better than using prasugrel and tic or ticagrel or with aspirin as all of you have already pointed out aspirin appears to increase the bleeding risk in most patients without giving too much more benefit at the end of one year i think we'll have to really look at those patients who continue to have a very severe ischemic risk and then give the dual antiplatelet therapy only for those or continue those on a single antiplatelet but not aspirin it would be a single antiplatelet like either ticagrel or clopidogrel depending upon the age group of the patient the availability the cost and so on and so forth the addition of the of the anti thrombotic as was clearly mentioned by sharad would go to the very high risk group of patients those who have peripheral vascular disease those who have multiple multiple vascular beds which are involved those who have got some amount of renal dysfunction those who had amputations and so on and so forth or those who are likely to have amputations i don't think we have enough though this trial the 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 compass trial did give us data to suggest that we could use it in a larger group of patients i still feel that bleeding will be be an issue at some point so i think we now have some strategies for we have to balance the high ischemic risk with the high bleeding risk or the high ischemic risk with the low bleeding risk so on and so forth and choose our antiplatelet therapy 
and our anti-thrombotic therapy to benefit our patients with the lowest risks that would be possible. I think that's what I would kind of summarize in this particular discussion. Thank you, yes. Brian. And uh, I think we had a long day. And uh, let me say a few uh, words uh, before we conclude this uh, nice meeting. Um, my sincere thanks to Sky, Dr. Imad Shiban, Dr. Ramesh, and uh, Dr. Um, um, you know, uh, one more uh, doctor uh, from US and um, uh, the uh, Elizabeth from uh, the Sky office, who all uh, made this uh, meeting, uh, the uh, association with uh, Hyderabad Live very successful. My sincere thanks to all my colleagues from Hyderabad, particularly Dr. Sridhar Kasturi and Dr. Rath, who sat till the end of the meeting. And uh, Sridhar, uh, you were uh, fantastic in the live case which you have done yesterday. And uh, or to my thanks to all the faculty and moderators, everybody who attended the meeting also. My special thanks to the industry, especially from McLeod, Sanjay Manjeshwar, and uh, Farida from USP. And uh, my thanks to uh, Vipan and Vujwal, who have uh, done a great job. Not a single time we had any reason to complain in these two days of this meeting. It is as good as you're all sitting in the same hall. Fantastic connectivity, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, good day to all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Happy congratulations for uh, Conducting uh, such a nice congratulations to you to your very also equally. Uh, yeah, but uh, without any interruption, without any hazard. Yeah, that's yeah, very very good connectivity. Yeah, right. thank you. Uh, from Delhi to Sarath and Dr. Imar Shivan and Sridhar Kasturi and Dr. Reddy and all the team right. members. I uh, Vipin Bhatia, who did the meeting, was introduced by our ICR meeting in 2008. Because earlier he was just doing a live session, but he was never doing a projections. So he, he called me yesterday that we are doing live, you should continue. So in 2008, he was introduced by ICR conference as a major player in this connection. And Sarath, you must be thankful to him also. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Imad Shiban, once again. Thank you, thank you. It was really good, uh, good uh, example for uh, good cooperation with Sky. And I think uh, we should proceed in this way. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good day. Okay. Bye. Bye.